if you're in the US and you think that you will retire one day, then forget about it because the system just flipped and it's no longer going to be just difficult to retire from now onwards, but it is just going to be impossible for the vast majority of Americans. And I'm going to explain to you right now why and how. So if you take a look at your paycheck, every time you receive your paycheck, there is a payroll tax. And a payroll tax basically means that the government is going to take a portion of your income in order to provide you with a decent retirement whenever you're going to retire, for example, at the age of 66. And that's the entire point of the social security system. So you're paying 6.2% of your income as a payroll tax to secure retirement. And then by law, your employer is also required to pay another 6.2% by law in order to ensure your retirement. That's not because your employer is so generous, but rather because every single employer, because before they actually offer you that job, they will actually include that 6.2% in your income in order to ensure that it's the one, you are the one who is going to pay that 6.2%. They will simply just deduct it from your income. So the entire point of it is that the government is making a case. Listen, you're dumb, you're stupid, and you're not going to save anything for your retirement. So we're going to force you to save for your retirement. But we're not just going to force you. You're going to pay that retirement fee to us in form of tax. And then we'll take that money and we will invest it somewhere. So that when you actually get old and you will retire, we'll take that money that you have actually paid in taxes and it will slowly pay it off to you over the course of your entire retirement. And that sounds like a pretty good deal to a certain extent. It's not really perfect, I mean, but it actually should make sense to a certain extent because it's the government, it's the country, it wants to take care of you. And that's why I want you to take a look if it actually, if the government is actually making a good job at actually securing retirement. So by law, the government is required to take your payroll taxes and invest it in government bonds or treasury bills. The Social Security Trust Fund at this point is lending money to the government, is buying government bonds. I mean, I'm not sure how exactly they came out with the system, but it's a brilliant system to provide some extra income for the government as a form of debt. But that's not the point. The point is that whether the government is doing a perfect job to ensure retirement. So let's take a look at that. If you actually scroll down and you take a look, let's take an example that you're making $60,000 and over the course of 35 years, you are going to save $260,400. Is that a lot of money? Well, in some sense, yes, it's a lot of money, but that's not really enough money to ensure your retirement because $260,000 isn't going to get you that far, right? So if you're actually paying 12.4% every single year and you are basically paying 7440 every single month, that will equal to $620 per month or this giant amount over a period of 35 years. And in order for us to find out if that's enough money for your retire, then we have to do the simple math. Life expectancy in the US as of the time I'm writing, I'm recording this video, is 80 years old. And the retirement age is 66. So that's a 14 year time period. So if we take this amount and we divide it by 14 years, it is going to give us $18,600. Is that a lot of money per year? Well, let everybody decide for himself. And that is going to amount to $1,500 per month. Now, honestly, it's not really a lot of money. It can get you groceries maybe, but if you kind of think about it in the grand scheme of things, if you are retired and you have and you have paid off your mortgage, for example, and you have a car, then that is a pretty decent amount to at least pay you for, for your groceries in most of the states. But of course, it's not a life-changing amount. And social security wasn't really meant to replace your entire retirement, but at least replace it partially. So let's take a look at how much the social security today is paying to people who made this much money in benefits. So if you take a look, it's something between $1,800 to $2,200 per month. That is substantially more than this amount of money, right? 
So at this point, it might seem like, wait a second, the government is doing a fantastic job. The government is paying me more money than the amount of money that I am putting into the payroll tax. Now, that looks great in the beginning. But if you think about it, you're actually giving it a 35 years time period. And within that time, the government should have invested that money. So if you've actually invested that money, you wouldn't just double that money over the course of 35 years, but you wouldn't just triple it. You might actually even grow it by five times. But the government isn't just doubling your income here, but just paying you slightly more than the amount that you actually saved. So that's exactly what the government is doing. So if you think about it, what if the government gave you the choice to actually invest that money somewhere safe, but not the government bonds? If you've actually taken that 12.4%, assuming that you're making $60,000 and invested that money in the S&P 500, for example, over the course of 35 years, it is going to amount to a little over $2 million. Now, $2 million or $18,600 and $18,600 per month. $2 million or $1,500 per month. Now, I will leave that for you to decide. Now, if you check that $2 million, for example, and you divide it by 14 years again, it is going to be $143,000 a year or $1,200 per month. So, if you think that the government is doing a perfect job to take care of of your retirement, then you are mistaken. Because at this point, the government is simply using that money for its own interest, not for the interest of the citizens. Well, a lot of people at this point might say, wait a second, that's not how social security works. Why are you fooling people? That's not the point of that. Yes, social security was initially designed in order to secure retirement. And the only reason you're paying payroll taxes so that you can have a comfortable retirement to a certain extent. But the source, that's not the, how the system is designed. It's not a savings account. It's not an investing account. It's basically a different system. The point of the social security system is for you to is to pay taxes to take care of the elderly people so that when you actually became elderly and the working people of that time will pay for you for your retirement. That's the point of the social security system. That's why we can't really do this math, even though that this would be a fair way to actually deal with it because if you're paying taxes in order to secure retirement, maybe you should have an option to do that, right? But even, let's leave this for a moment. Let's just take a look at how the system is actually designed, whether you can retire with this system that the government is built in the first place. So if you take a look at the current system, it was designed in such a way that we have a certain number of working people and there are always more working people than retired people. So initially the system, let's say for example, designed that 100 people is going to take care of 10 people. It's not one for one. Because if one person takes care of one elderly person, then that person might have actually be taxed at least 70%. But that's not something we can actually afford. So if 10 people will pay a small portion of their paycheck to take care of one retired person, then it makes sense. So 100 to 10 ratio is pretty decent if we, wanna, if we want this system to work. But for this system to work, we have to make a certain consideration. For example, we have something called inflation. And inflation means that every single year prices are rising. Like $100 30 years ago was a lot more money than $100 today. And that's why the benefits that the retired people receive are being adjusted to inflation every single year. Otherwise, that money wouldn't make any kind of sense. So if we want for this system to actually work, we must make sure that the income of the, rich, of the working people at this point are actually matching with inflation. Otherwise, their benefits are rising, but their income aren't rising as much. So what is going to happen at the end of the day is that they won't be paying enough money in order to secure these people. And that's why we need that the income should rise at least as much as inflation in the first place. The second most important factor that we have to consider is the number of people on each side. For example, let's say now we have 100 people supporting 10 people, for example, and the system works to a certain extent. But what happens if 
for example, instead of, let me just change the color here, let's say for example that this number is going to be raised to 50 people. And now we have 100 people supporting 50 people. Will the system work in that case? Well, absolutely not. Either we have to tax these people more or we have to increase this number in the first place. So this, this, this system that we have built, which is called social security back in 1935, it works only if the mathematics behind it works. The moment the equation actually flips, then it no longer actually makes sense for people. It no longer will work for the next generation. And that's exactly what I want to take a look here. So if you actually scroll up here and take a look to what extent the system actually works here, we have to take a look at the fertility rate or the birth rate in the United States. Then only we can actually say whether the system works or not. So this is the graph that shows the fertility rate in the US from 1800 up until 2020. And if you actually look at this graph, it will be clear for you whether the system works or not. So the system was built right here. So the social security was built right here. And the point of the system was that we're building the system today and it's just straight away should start paying for the retired people of today. And the only system would work if the equation is actually makes sense. What happened after that is that we had like World War II at this point, and then we had the period of the baby boomers. And for the system to actually work in this sense, then each generation that we have now should be able to pay for the previous generation. But the problem happens is that when the birth rate significantly starts dropping to the bare minimum. So back in the days, for example, in the peak of the baby boomers, these people used to have like what? Almost four children. I would say like 3.8 children per woman or per family. However, it's counted. And now it's around 1.8. And what happened is that all those people now are getting older and older and older. And they're getting into the retired age. And the people who came after them or the people who were born after the baby boomers who are significantly less than the baby boomers and now have to take care of the baby boomers who are actually getting old. And that's why if you actually take a look at the statistics of the elderly people, of the retired people in the United States, you will realize that over the course of the last 20 years, it has been significantly increasing. And I have the chart right in front of you here. So back in 1950s and 80s, we had like 8 to 9% of the population who were like 65 and elder. And the system would work in that case because now like 11% of the population taking care of the 9% of the population. But as you can see, that number starts rising and rising and rising. And now we are somewhere around here where the percentage is 18. So we have 82% of the population at this point taking care of the 18% of the population. And that's why at this point, the equation does not make sense anymore. Either we have to tax these people or maybe borrow money in order to solve that problem. And the next problem that actually presents that a lot of people are actually not talking about is that what happened over the last, I would say, 50 years is that the life expectancy in the US started rising dramatically. Like if you go back, for example, to 1970s, the life expectancy was like 70. You can see that right here. And the retirement age, 66. So if I'm going to retire back in 1970s, the government, the social security system should take care of me for another four years until I pass away, for example. But now, because the life expectancy has grown substantially to 80 years, as you can see right here, what happens is that four years is no longer enough. Now the social security system should pay for my benefits for another 14 years. So not only that, the number of retired people has grown substantially since then, and it's like 82% to 18%, but those are who are retired now are living significantly longer, which means that the system simply cannot take care of them. And if you actually take a look at the experts estimation, the social security might actually collapse in the next, four, in the next few years. And if you actually also take a look at the statistics, you will realize that because, I mean, because this is the peak of the baby boomers. Yes. And all those pe and all these people are now going to get retired over the next five to 10 years. And it's expected that over the next 
10 years, every single year, 4 million people are going to get into retirement. So we will have to take care of those people for at least 14 years. And if the life expectancy is going to keep growing, for example, after that, then we might actually need to take care of them for much longer. And so what exactly are we supposed to do at this point? Should we actually raise taxes again? That's not something that people actually want to do, right? So let's take a look at the possible solutions in order. How can we possibly solve this problem at this point? And I have a few real solutions that can actually help us to get out of this crisis at this point. The first thing we can actually do is that stop adjusting the benefits. So every single year, the Social Security Trust Fund adjusts the benefits for the retired people to adjust them to inflation. So if we actually stop doing that, then the spending of the Social Security Trust Fund is going to reduce over the next few years. And it, is, it could be a possibility to solve this problem. But this is not a solution that will ever happen. Because remember, first of all, it is going to actually lower down their paychecks much farther and will actually make the retirement for them impossible. That's number one. And secondly, you have to understand that elderly people are the first people who are out there voting for the politicians. So imagine we have a politician who's going to come and say, I'm going to cut your benefits or I'm going to stop adjusting your benefits to inflation. Do you think this all of these elderly people are going to vote for that politician? Of course not. That is never going to happen, which is why elderly people, retired people have a lot of voting power, which means that that's not a solution that anybody is going to take. Not a single politician will ever do something like that. And secondly, that is unethical to do in the first place. These people worked hard. They paid taxes. They've actually pay taxes for 30, 40, or 50 years in some cases, and now cutting their benefits at this point is absolutely unfair. But we have a second solution, and I think the second solution is the most likely solution that is going to happen in the next few years. First of all, raise the minimum retirement age. And that's something will probably happen in the US in the next five years. The current retired retirement age is 66 in the US and the life expectancy is 80. So if we actually increase the retirement age from 66 to 72, for example, now we have to take care of them for 14 years because life expectancy is 80. But if we increase the retirement age from 72 to, sorry, from 66 to 72, now we will take care of them for just eight years. And for an extra five years, we have extra more working people. So we're kind of adjusting the equation in such a way for the social security to keep working. That is, of course, an unpopular thing to do. But if you've actually taken a look at the last presidential election in the United States, for example, you've seen a lot of, a lot of candidates to actually talk about that problem. Because... Everybody knows that it's a real problem and that something must be done. Otherwise, the entire social security system is going to collapse. But not a single politician actually has the guts in order to pull something like that because he will instantly lose all of his voters. And the second thing we can actually do is that raise taxes. Again, this is very unpopular because if you're going to raise taxes, then you are going to raise the payroll tax. People are already paying a lot of taxes. Like the average American is paying so much taxes in the first place. So if we actually raise the payroll tax, for example, from 14.4% by one or two percentage, it is going to make a real difference in the social security system. But I don't think that is a popular policy to take. And I don't think any politician, I mean, politicians could take such kind of a measure in the next five to 10 years, probably. But I really doubt it. But it's a real possibility. However, there is a real third solution. And that solution has been already happening for the last few years, you can say so. And that is called immigrants. Now, you might actually hate immigrants, or you might actually love immigrants. And it doesn't really matter. So a lot of people are actually wondering, like people, I mean, first of all, a lot of people don't really like immigrants because they come to the country, they take our jobs, they take our paychecks, they take our income, they destroy our culture. <laughs> that is some of the arguments that some politicians are making. On the other side, you have like pro-immigrants people, right? And this is not a political debate that I'm trying to shape here. Whatever your opinion I'm not arguing against you and I want you to keep your opinion as much as you want. But I want you to think about this thing from a completely different perspective. 
why do you think politicians let immigrants to get into the country? And that's not just the United States. I mean, if you take Britain, if you take uh, European Union, you will see that they're like anti-immigrants, but at the same time, they leave this back door for the immigrants to, ke to get into the country. So why exactly are they doing? This is your answer. Because at the end of the day, when you don't want to raise taxes, when you don't want to raise the minimum retirement age, and you know that your social security system is actually broken. Of course, in other countries, they have the exact same system, and it's actually called differently in every single country. But the entire perspective, the structure, the point of the system is exactly the same. Maybe some minor differences here and there, but the system is pretty much the same in every single country in the world, including the United States. So when you have immigrants coming into the country, what kind of people do come into your country? These are not old people. These are not, these are the people who want to come and work. So you're getting more working people into the country. And these people are going to pay taxes. They're going to pay payroll taxes. So you're kind of adjusting the equation in such a way that you have more working people so that you can actually afford the benefits for the elderly people. And you're kind of adjusting the equation in such a way. So that is the only way for now how politicians are actually solving the social security system. But it's not a guaranteed way and it could actually collapse. And even though that's, and even though, even if the system doesn't collapse us, it's going to provide you with $1,000, $2,000 per month, which is not enough at all to save you for your retirement, which is why you should take action on your own and start investing. And one of the best places you can actually start investing and building generational wealth is, of course, the stock market. So start buying assets, start investing in stocks. And if you don't know how to invest, start learning, invest in yourself and understand how to do that in the first place. That's how you actually save yourself. Take care.